Hey everybody, how you doing, Uncle Vinny? You know what's coming up? That's right, health chat. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Nick Sergalo, and you're listening to Health Chat. I'm so excited to be here as always. You know, we're just having one of those days. I don't know about you, but I had kind of a crazy weekend. My wife and I were just kind of relaxing, hanging out, and I'll tell you what, we ate junk. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, we were talking about last week about fear and anxiety. We had the uh, the second part of that. And this week, we're going to talk about a bad word. We're going to talk about gluten. Now, if you remember last week, we, you and I, we talked about the ANS system. Remember, we had the fight or flight or we had the rest and digest. Well, here's why we're going to be talking about that a little bit today, because I don't think we realize how gluten and sugar affect our moods, affect the way we feel, affect our joints, affect our digestive system. Now, if you are gluten intolerant and have celiac disease, you've had the blood tests for it and it shows up, I have celiac disease, you know that you have an issue, so you stay away from your uh, refined carbohydrates and your breads and your pastas and things like that. Well, What if you don't test positive for celiac disease? Does that still mean that you don't have reactions to these glutens? No, because I test negative for celiac disease, but yet gluten or pastas, breads, anything that's got wheat in it or preservatives in it affect me drastically. Also, sugars do similar things. Now remember, carbohydrates, All they do is convert to sugars. So that's why we're going to be talking a little bit about both the sugars and the carbohydrates. So for me personally, this weekend, I'm just going to tell you what I did. I went out and I had some pizza, had some chocolate. Let me tell you something. I woke up miserable. My head wasn't right. I just felt fatigued. I felt foggy headed. Believe it or not, I felt agitated. And I find that when I eat certain foods, specifically breads, pastas, sugars, what I do is my mind gets real antsy and aggravated and I'm, I'm a little anxious with things or I'll fly off the handle pretty quick. These are things associated with what we talked about last week, fear and anxiety. So now diet is starting to play into part of that. You've heard the term, my head feels foggy. Well, that's truly what happens. And let me tell you something. I'm not the only one that deals with this. I know there's a lot of you out there that have these similar symptoms. You don't realize that your diet has affected you, that it's now become the norm. There has been proof that we can reverse diabetes, we can reverse heart disease, we can reverse high blood pressure, all with diet and exercise. I would venture to say that the most important part of that is diet. All the books that we read, all the books they talk about, diet, exercise, diet, exercise, diet, exercise. Diet is the most important part of those of those two things. If you have, so let's just call them symptoms, your joints hurt, because mine do, after I eat sugars and um, these carbohydrates, I feel my, my, my wrists hurt, my knees hurt, and I usually don't have those problems but until I eat these foods. So if you're suffering with musculoskeletal type diseases, if you're dealing with depression and anxiety, if you're dealing with fatigue, you need to look at your diet. Let's take two weeks and not have sugars or gluten. Now, I will tell you this. You may not be easy to live with. Your spouse may want to hurt you or you want to make, want to hurt your spouse because you're not eating these things. Because they, you will go through withdrawals that will, some of them are very severe. And some of them are just annoying. But I promise you, if you can stop eating some of these foods, pasta, bread, diet drinks, sugar in your coffee, little things like that. So think about this. It's like, Doc, I don't know what I should give up. Give up something that has either gluten in it and or sugar in it, or both, because we're going to give up sugar and gluten. If you're going to do this challenge, well, get gluten-free stuff. Don't do that either. 
because that gluten-free stuff has a lots and lots and lots of sugar in it that will affect you and you won't be able to get this out of your system. Drink plenty of water when you're doing this, okay? Make sure you're eating a good balanced diet. If you're eating a 2,000 calorie diet, you can eat 2,000 calories of Twinkies or you can eat 2,000 calories of healthy food. So I want you to start looking at eating healthier food. You will see a huge difference in the next two weeks. My challenge to you, in two weeks, we're going to revisit this and see how we've done. I need to make this, me personally, as a lifestyle change. You know I'm always going to talk to you from my uh, Judeo-Christian background. I have been waking up in the middle of the night, and I feel that the Spirit of God has said, listen, you need to do this. Now, some of you may think that's crazy. Some of you are going, oh, I can, I can understand that. But let me tell you something. If my spirit is telling me I need to do something, that means I need to do something. I don't want to take medication to sleep. I don't want to take medications for aches and pains. I don't want to do that. So if you are taking these medications for anxiety, if you're taking medications for pain, if you're taking medications for inflammation, when you do this challenge, notice how you feel. I did not say stop taking medication. What I'm saying is you might start to feel better and realize that by your diet and your exercise, you and your doctor can talk about your medications and see about maybe changing them or even getting off of them. But again, I am not telling you to stop your medications. What I am telling you is let's see how you do with the challenge. Let's see how you do in the next two weeks. If you're doing better and you want to make this a lifestyle change and you want to get off your medications, now is that, that would be the time to talk to your doctor and say, listen, I'm changing my diet. I'm exercising more. And can we do something different with these medications? I can guarantee that most of you and most of your doctors will agree and say, yeah, you know, if we can get off of this stuff, great. I'm doing this for me. But I'm also telling you because I know it's going to work. I've done it before, made a huge difference. Why did I fall off the bandwagon? Truthfully, I'm lazy with it. I'm not as disciplined as I would like to be. I'm disciplined in a lot of areas. But when it comes to food, I'm not. It's a, it's a genetic thing with my family. You know, we have no portion control. I, I bet you if you look at our genes, you'll find one of those that says no portion control. I know you can do this. It will be difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. Some of you will breeze right through it. Others, you're going to have a little bit more of a problem. With that being said, guys, I love you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. bread, pasta, and favorite treats, but is it as harmless as it seems? Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye, for some, it's more than just a dietary component. It is a major source of health issues. One of the most well-known conditions related to gluten is celiac disease, an autoimmune disorder affecting roughly 1 in 100 people worldwide. Even with suffer from non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Symptoms like bloating, fatigue, and headaches can significantly im significant relief from your digestive issues, a boost in your energy levels, and an overall enhancement in your well-being, especially if you're sensitive to gluten. If you're grappling with unexplained health issues, consider whether gluten could be the underlying cause.
listen to your body's signals, and explore the potential benefits of embracing a gluten-free lifestyle.